Hi folks, Brian here from Keyboard Exchange International here in sunny Sanford, Florida. Today we wanted to share with you one of our successful restoration jobs we did for a customer and if you have a Hammond organ that's in need of restoration, please give us a call. For now, enjoy the video and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Well, Randolph, it's another exciting day here at Keyboard Exchange. Absolutely. It's always exciting for Randolph. Well, I think so too, some days at least. <laughs> Anyway, we have a restoration project that we just wrapped up for a new friend of ours whose name is Red. And Red, we're making this video especially for you so that you can anticipate what you're going to be seeing and hearing when you come out to pick the organ up and do your final test. Now, Randolph, we did a lot of work on this organ. Yes. It's a B2 that he thought was a 1951. But as soon as it got here, I saw those smooth draw bars and the serial number, which was a, a real good surprise, uh, because then I knew it was a 1954. Late 53, early 54, or sometime in 54, because it had those smooth draw bars. That's always a big advantage. And before we got it, Red had put on uh, percussion. So I see you have it set up with the, uh, is that the fifth harmonic all the way on? Yes, fifth. Yeah, okay. So this, this percussion system from Trek 2 is different than what's on a B3 or a C3, but in some ways it's actually better. More options. More options, the ability, the ability to combine the percussion settings. The, the main thing I think we have to be careful of is not to use too much percussion because you can quite literally get too much percussion with this particular system. But after installing new tubes, rebuilding the preamp, grounding the organ, fusing it, going through and doing everything that we do to make sure it's going to be a very reliable instrument, rebuilding the Leslie, new speakers, recon, well new speakers, everything are new in, in, as far as speakers go in the, in the Leslie and we put in a special Atlas driver which I think was needed and um, we hope you like it Red. Take a listen. Uh, Randolph's going to play a little bit and uh, then you'll know what to expect when you get here. And if it's too much treble, we can just adjust it down. Absolutely. But before we had it adjusted all the way up and I thought, eh, it's not quite enough. Right. So that's when we upgraded to the Atlas driver to give a little more punch. So Randolph, uh, we don't have uh, the bass pedals on the organ because of the unusual dolly that this organ is currently sitting on. But if you could play a little bit for Red, uh, let's switch places here. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Randolph Carter playing on Red's Hammond B2 with Leslie 145. That's been uh, stored here by Keyboard Exchange International. Take it away, Randolph. <laughs>
Jim Huss speaking with you from the showroom at Keyboard Exchange International. We'd like to thank all of you who have helped us grow our business for the past 51 years, and it is our intent to find good homes for all the instruments we have gathered uh, from all over the United States. Thank you to the families that have preserved the instruments and then sold them to us knowing that we would find good homes for them. If you, on the other hand, are in need of an instrument, please give us a call. Uh, there's been a lot of effort to gather these instruments together and we would like to make you part of the Keyboard Exchange International family. Let's all work together to keep these fine instruments going long into the future so that we now and future generations can continue to enjoy the wonderful sound of the Hammond Tone Wheel Organ. God bless. Signing off.